Now, of course, um, front page of Farmers Weekly, a great story uh, continuing to follow the freshwater uh, national policy standards from the government that have come down and how we are going to either adjust to this or will the government be making some amendments. We know that we're all in this freshwater quality mission together and uh, catchment groups have absolutely exploded, as particularly in the last five years. A great way to actually create a community group just as much and come together around learning over our own ecosystem. Farmers um, who want to improve them are being are urged to do this from the bottom up. And uh, Rangitakai Rivers Catchment Collective Chair Roger Dalrymple is one of those and joins us now. Roger, welcome to Sarah's Country. It's a pleasure to have you on the show. Thanks, Sarah. Enjoying to be here. Hey, so Roger, you're urging farmers to take a stronger footing to prove this verifiable data. What do you mean by that? Um, well, at the end of the day, um, Sarah, you know, we've all just been confronted with the new freshwater policies from the government. And that's all come from social pressure, pressure from science. Uh, and I can list the scientists, we don't need to. But there's freshwater ecologists out there and there's social pressure that we're polluting our waterways and we're, and we're not actually looking after the environment to the, to the standard that so, uh, the society wants. And so... Um, we need to understand that science ourselves. We need to get a better understanding so that we've actually got some tools in the toolbox. Um, when we get challenged again, and we will get challenged again, there's no doubt about that, um, so that we've got some, some, some data in the toolbox that we can use and say, well, actually, we're not polluting our soils or we're, or we're not polluting our waterways or we are looking after our ecosystem better than uh, is being generalised. Okay, we're talking about intergenerational um, here on Serious Country tonight, and of course our next generation is why we do what we do. Now, t- tell us about the catchment collective that uh, looks after 700,000 hectares in the Rangitakai, t- um, Turakina and uh, Whangahu River catchments. What type of work are these local catchment groups doing to be able to test and monitor um, these measurements of freshwater quality? Uh, good question, Sarah. Look, it's 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 first of all, it's getting farmers on board. Um, we're not we're not trying. To, we're, this isn't as a result of the freshwater policy thing. Uh, this is this is getting an understanding of our environment. And uh, sure thing, we've got we've got the um, freshwater policy thing, which has arrived. But community catchments aren't going to aren't going to fix that. They'll help guide farmers through it. But it's it's getting people on board um, and helping educate farmers. Um, taking small steps and understanding if our farms are polluting, where they're polluting. Um, at the moment, our regional councils are doing uh, testing, but it's in quite a, um, in a broad manner. Um, it's not specific enough. So as, as community catchments do it, they follow in their tributaries and they can do testing. But we can't really, we don't want to, we don't want to focus solely on water testing. Mm. Um, it gets people in the room. There's no doubt about that because people love to know what is happening in their tributary. Mm. But it's actually a bigger, far bigger picture than just our waterways. Um, it's how we hold on to our soils. It's our biodiversity. It's 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 enhancing our community. Um, look, farming farming depends on our uh, ecosystem, um, and if we don't understand it, how can we actually capture it? It's it, what's what's available and. Uh, and make sure we look after it for generations to go forward. I so wanna, it's a long-term thing. Yeah, I want to discuss uh, your comments here about farm environment plans being like financial budgets, measuring income and outgoings. But, Roger, when uh, this particular style from top down is about inputs and doesn't really care too much about profit margins out the back end or outputs, which uh, farmers have been focusing on, which is uh, water quality, how do we actually treat that like a financial budget when we're so heavily focused on those inputs? Sarah, it's probably more about putting it on paper. Like we've all, we all know our farms intimately. We know the soil types. We know if we go to a certain part of a paddock that they might you'll get bogged. If you sneak around the edge, you know it's dry or whatever. So we know our farms intimately. It's putting that down on a piece of paper because we, we have to we, – uh, having, uh, having it in your head is no longer – is no longer good enough. And it's the same with a budget. Um, many years ago, farmers did their budgets in their head. Mm. And so that's that's where the comparison is. It's putting it down on a piece of paper so that you've got something that you can share with everyone on the farm. 
your bankers, um, uh, your bankers and, and everyone who you're working with on the farm so they understand what the long-term goal is, what the, what the weak points of the farm are, which is the, which is the strong wintering country, which is the um, stuff that dries out, et cetera, et cetera. So it's writing it down so everyone involved in the business understands what the long-term goal is. And have some accountability and measurability around some of these achievements as well over time, I'd imagine. Correct. That, that's that's a really important point. Um, like for other people to um, tell our story, which which is what it's all about. Because if I tell you I'm a really good farmer, you won't listen to me. But if other people tell you I'm a good farmer, they will. So having it written down and and recording what we've got and what we've changed allows other people to to understand what we've got and what we, what and, and how we've changed over time and what improvements we've done. How have you been able to create a collective around the table approach with all the organisations in your collective catchments case? Uh, basically just getting an understanding. Like we've been getting it top down for the last 150 years. Um, and, you know, you can't blame the government. That's their job. Um, they listen to social pressure. They listen to things and they just set rules. And it's not just in, uh, just not just in the environment. So coming from the bottom up, um, really sort of um, resonated with farmers. They said, shucks, yes, if we understand it and get some tools in our toolbox, understand our environment better, um, it, 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 everyone just jumped on board. Um, they, they, they understand it. And it's not going to happen overnight. That's the important thing. It's, it's, it's a time thing. It's an intergenerational thing. There's no doubt about that. With this low slope covering a large majority of New Zealand, Roger, how do you mm. believe we're – logistically and physically going to be able to fence off that amount of waterways and the huge amounts of stock water systems that are going to have to go in as well. Well, Sarah, that's, what, that's exactly what's wrong with it because it is huge. And it is, it is a, as a rule, it's a global rule for the whole country, but it's not actually, it shouldn't be. And, and that's why community catchments, if we could get to that level and let farmers decide where the key points are. Like we've got an example, I know it was written in the paper, that one farmer changed what he was going to do fencing-wise because of the results he got from the testing we were doing. And farmers know where the weak points are, but doing more testing and more understanding of, of what effects are, like a wool shed mm. has a huge effect. But all wool sheds are planted beside um, streams because that's where it's dry and that's where the water is. But they're actually highly polluting things because there's so much manure going there that can flow in. So that's that's something that uh, you can discuss in community catchments and you can say, right, well, let's plant a whole lot of trees around there to try and capture that effluent um, to help look after that waterway. So it's, it's, it's just getting a better understanding. Uh, you're absolutely passionate and spend a lot of time in these – River ways. What about river mouths? And uh, we were talking about earlier white baiting. You must be a keen white baiter, Roger. We're kicking white off the baiting, season yes, this week. Yes. yes, I was very naive. I was very naive when I was a lot younger. Um, I was out the back of our farm on a motorbike, and um, uh, our shepherd, our head shepherd, was with me. I was the boy, and we went out to the um, out to the uh, a little stream called Hell's Hole. We've got a a, a um, stream on our a, a paddock on our farm called Hell's Hole. Don't ask me how it was called. It I assume lots of people got bogged in it. I'm not sure, but it's called Hell's Hole. And it's called the Hell's Hole Drain. Went out to the water mouth, and here are all these things trying to get up it. It was white bait. If I'd known that at the time, um, we would have had a roiler. Uh, but no, white baiting is a, is a thing that is, is really important. That's one of the reasons why we look after our streams, um, because we all love white bait. It's a delicacy. And, you know, that could be some of the, that could be, that's a perfect example of what a community catchment could do. Rather than say we want to hit this level or that level, they might say we want to enhance our white bait. Um, so we don't have to actually measure it with nitrates and phosphates and things. We want to look after the ecology of the stream. So there's all sorts of ways of doing it. It's not just about science. Yeah, we had Rick Cameron on Serious Country uh, a week or so back, and he defined, say, regenerative agriculture as the measure of success is when the birds return, similar in terms of what you're saying there, Roger. Yeah, hey, mm, and, and yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I am very much looking forward to a feed of whitebait from the Turakina. Uh, however, Roger, I made a very, very silly mistake whereby I skited about how I've eaten far too much white bait over the years and I've had so much of it, uh, you know, blah, 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 that this person decided to eat all of the white bait. So I'll know for next time to keep my mouth shut. I haven't had a feed for the season yet. What about yourself? 
No, not yet, but I've been, uh, I, I have been given a, a, a reasonable quantity in a butter container because um, we have pheasants on our farm and uh, a number of, uh, this guy came and he's bought one bought a box of chocolates and one bought a, a thing of white bait. So looking forward to that. Can yeah, I suggest delicacy. put a lid on it and put it right at the back of your freezer so no one knows it's there? <laughs> <laughs> and just have Ro- Rogers only or written on the top of it. Hey, thank you so yeah. much, Roger Del Rampol, joining us there with his hat on tonight as the chair of the um, Rangitakai Rivers Catchment Collective. And of course, front page on your Farmers Weekly this week. This is Sarah's Country.